get a get the hang of it because I, I think I should I should switch up and go on that and it has so much fucking shit but like it's so hard to like find it all without like knowing you know so like I keep on having to watch YouTube videos like I have my my um my whole entire script is all set so I have the whole entire video is set there but like putting the transitions and things like that those are things that i can't figure out just off the bat where to find them right um, like how to do world picture. of editing for you yeah how to do picture in picture i couldn't figure it out immediately so i need to freaking like figure that out i know that you could do it just know how, don't know how and that was with me with uh, da vinci resolve i mean i was trying to figure all that out and i f eventually figured it out i mean youtube tutorials are the best thing that you can possibly look at yeah. when coming down to those i mean what a what a great cold open there eddie oh <laughs> talking about editing yeah the life of a youtuber yeah hey for those who are considering becoming youtubers i support it a hundred percent but no it is not easy right it takes time and effort yes it does but uh all right let's let's get started with this episode Perfect. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of East vs. West, episode... Is this episode right. 30? It's, ep it's episode something. It's been a minute. <laughs> I'm about to get to the bottom of this right now. Oh. What episode it's on. And I'll know this from the one that's coming out for us tomorrow, but it's already been out the last couple of weeks for people. That's Miss Michaela's, which it's was another out. fun podcast. Shout out to Michaela. Go check that out. This is episode 30. Is it? This is episode 30. Wow. East versus West. Hey. Congratulations to 30 episodes. Here's to 70 more. Hell yeah. Get to that 100. Get that 100. But uh, 30 episodes of East versus West, man. This is a, a huge milestone for us, man. I mean, we've been doing this show for about two years now, on and off, and we've actually really been staying consistent with it this year <laughs> yeah has it been two years just about 2018 i think is when we first started damn yeah i so, think you're right i i think around like the halloween horror nights time in 2018 is when like we first summertime started. yeah around yeah. this time actually so we might be on the two-year anniversary as well oh geez oh man don't two get years, emotional two years of east versus <laughs> west 30 episodes later man and we're trying to grind to that 100 yep I want to have yeah. two podcasts at episode 100. Yep. And, and for those of you tuning in for your first time, that, that fine young gentleman speaking is Anthony Zaragoza from the Knights of Horror. And this fine gentleman who looks like one of the actors from 13 Reasons Why is Eddie from Eddietainment. Hey, hey I, I like that. This is the first time we introduce each other instead of introducing ourselves. Right. <laughs> but honestly, look up. If anybody watches that show, 13 Reasons Why, please tell me. I don't know the character itself. It was pointed out to me by my coworker. But when I saw the picture, I was like, this guy looks spot on. If I, if I have the picture, I'll put it up on the screen. But there's, <laughs> oh, a, com man. there's a comparison. He looks just like him. I mean. I don't see it. I don't see it. You don't I see know it. what you're talking about. But everyone but else sees it. <laughs> I've actually watched all the episodes of 13 Reasons Why, but I can't tell you what his name is. For oh, Tony. His name's Tony. His name's Tony. <laughs> ironically. Yeah. That's hilarious. Tony's telling me I look like Tony. Did you watch it with your girlfriend, first of all? Um, the f first season? No, I watched it with my roommate. Me and my roommate actually watched okay. all of them. Yeah. Okay. We, they were binge watching. Um, binge watching it? Oh, hell yeah. I, I think that's the only show that I could say every season I've watched all the way through without like skipping a day. Like In one day, watched it all. I yeah, with, I know. With Hill House, the first season. Hill House took me like two days. That took me. I was done in a day, dude. I started at like ten in the morning. I finished at like midnight. I, see, I think that was my problem. I started like at ten at night, yeah. not knowing we had just heard of it, and we probably went up to like four a.m. and then we we're like, all right, we could start watching this again later on in the afternoon. <laughs> Let's take a nap, and we did, and then we Let's finished take a nap. it. That yeah. Um. But yeah, man, thirty episodes. I can't believe that. So, in celebration of the thirty episodes, uh. We're going to do another coast comparison, but um, this was another fan-suggested one. I mean, obviously, last week was the fan-suggested one, but this is, like, the one he really wanted, which was comparing 
uh, the two Coast's uh, original mazes of 2019. Um, if you guys went to the event in um, Hollywood, we only had Holidays in Hell and uh, the Curse of Pandora's Box. So I had really an easy time choosing which one I wanted to do. <laughs> Whereas in Orlando, they had, I think, what, like four or five originals? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, for Eddie, it's a little bit more of an option to choose some stuff, but... Um, but it yeah. was also a fairly easy choice. Fairly easy choice for Eddie, so that's that's a good sign. But this video was suggested by Mr. The HHN Cosplayer. Um, and we, we shouted him out last week, but we're going to do it again this week um, because this time we're doing the right one that he actually wanted. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, but it was still good to get that original one out of the way. Uh, we'll do yeah. more of those soon of, of originals and stuff. Uh, you know, we have a lot of IPs to still cover on the, on the channel as well. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. But today we are doing uh, The Curse of Pandora's Box and Graveyard Games, um, both 2019 HHN. Um, we're going to start today with the Curse of Pandora's box. Um, if you guys realize our pattern by now, it's back and forth. So <laughs> every episode, we always switch it. Who goes first? Uh, last episode, it was me. All right, last episode, it was Eddie. This episode, it will be me. Um, so just keep up with the pattern. Yep. If anyone caught on to that, I don't know. I may just be – I may just blew someone's mind, and they're going to go back yep. and rewatch Absolutely. all of them now. They're going to be like, whole. Oh. These guys have been playing ninja games with my with my brain. They're gonna go back and check every episode now. Like, holy shit, they have been doing that. <laughs> um, but here we go. Curse of Pandora's box. Uh, Theme Park HD. Big shout out to him. Always giving us the quality content that we have to do these coast comparisons. So, here we go in three, two, one. So this was uh, this this was a new location. This was also where us was located. So this is where this this is the year we didn't have the tram. But they use the tram. This is the tram garage area where they do all the repairs on the tram. So they put two mazes in front of it, which I thought was a very good idea. It expanded our event. Even more. This is this kind of box. Wait, so uh, is this is this an actual like building? Oh, so I don't know if you see that, but the door's opening up. That's the, if you got lucky enough to do that, that was a secret entrance to the maze, because other than that, you would just go left and continue on to the maze. If you got lucky to open that door, that was basically Pandora's box opening up, and you got to go through that entrance. See, like, the other entrance is on the left right there, uh, where the black curtains are, but if you got lucky enough to go inside Pandora's box, like, you had to press the button. It was very interactive, so that was really cool. I got to see that actually a couple of times. Nice. Was it a whole different experience? Uh, not really. I mean, it was just another, it was an alternative way to go, but it was really, it was really bitchy to see that thing open up. And up and but you'll see a lot of, uh, you'll see a lot of props in the Black Shadow 13 What is up with John Murray on these black walls, man? Uh, it's called Budget. I need to budge it. The budget a little bit more. <laughs> He likes that 3D stuff, though, uh, like 3D paint. This wasn't so in 3D, but yeah, the paint's cool. Oh, I like that, that uh, like, kind of like wolf lion almost looking like thing. There's more of those rooms. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, he definitely took a lot of inspiration. Did they have actors in this one? Yes. Oh, there they are. I don't are. know if the walkthrough he goes through had them, but there was actors. Yeah, he was like yep. That, that is a, a dope, like, scare. I like that scare a lot. Yeah, it's really cool. Was that a slider? No, we don't have sliders. Yeah, okay. They just get on the knees and go crazy, though. Gotcha. This was one of those mazes where I was like, I hope in the future we get more original. Yeah, you guys typically are IP heavy. Yeah. This looked creepy with the, the lighting it had. It looked like they were actually moving and stuff, which looked dope. Medusa. Yeah. That was a cool effect. I like that a lot. Wait, is, is Medusa part of the Pandora's box 
Yeah, because it's Greek mythology. Oh. Ooh, there she is again. Got the snakes everywhere. That was a good scare. That scared the shit out of me. I know that. Her head popping out? Yeah. This was one of the mazes that we did uh, the uh, Trying to Get Scared Challenge in. This is actually the maze that saved my ass to go round two with them. So. But there's more you Black won. Sabbath. You won the belt back? I did. You're about to see some still walkers right now. That look pretty cool. Oh, yeah, there, there we are. Oh man, the spider web. Cool. This one kind of scared me because I don't like spiders and shit. But I hate spiders and snakes. Yeah, but the the creature, the see the the design on this person looks really cool actually. So that didn't scare me as much. They did a really good job with making that uh, spider costume practical. Yeah. It's really cool because you're kind of seeing a modern day like what would happen to Pandora's box open. It's actually really cool to see all that. Nice. And that is the Curse of Pandora's box. Thank you so much. So all that was right. fun. I really enjoyed that one this year. Did a yeah, that was job. a that was a cool looking house. Yeah, that was fun. I really, I really, really enjoyed that. For not doing originals too often, you guys pulled it off really well yeah they did a good job on that one the facade was cool too the facade was basically like supposed to be a gift shop um or like an antique shop so when you walked in there was like a bunch of antiques everywhere and then there was pandora's box so that's what kind of really started it all so that nice. was really cool all right so what Great. do we got next graveyard games at halloween horror nights 29 universal orlando is there let me get past this commercial the orlando side of things man and then we'll see his Orlando intro because it's always different. Yeah. <laughs> but I like this one because it was very – this maze, from what I remember, it was very interactive. Yeah, the the interactivity portion of it, I was expecting a little bit more. And maybe that was my own fault because um, remember they had like the texting and everything. Right. Um, and it wasn't so much interactive as more it was like, here, we're going to give you these two options to continue the conversation type of thing. Right. But I liked it. Actually, uh, before we do this one, we forgot to mention, we have East versus West merch uh, on available on my Teespring, uh, which will be in the description below. Check that out. Two designs, one designed by my cousin, the OG logo, which you'll probably see on my screen, and then the newer logo, which was designed by our buddy Adrian from Lost TV, which you'll see on Eddie's screen. So there we go. We have two different logos out right now. Uh, amazing merch. We got face masks. We got shirts. We got freaking long sleeve shirts, women's t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, tank tops, stickers, all that fun stuff. So rep your East versus West merch now. Link is in the description below. Blech. So now let's go on <laughs> to Graveyard Games. All right. In three, two, one. Theme Park there's, HD. There's that Orlando. Uh, uh, intro. Intro. Graveyard, Graveyard Games. Game. A 50 minute wait. Yeah, Where's the social know. distancing? So he's getting so he's getting escorted by staff, so yeah. This is much brighter than it was when I walked through it. He probably yeah, he went to the daytime it looks like. It's inside of a building, so yeah, those are like the kids that like basically the, the story was these kids kind of messed with like some gravestones right. and basically brought some stuff back that they didn't expect. I that like the whole idea of them graffitiing along the graves yeah. and stuff. That's cool. And then some kids went missing and whatnot. What the hell is that? It's like a grass thing. It's like a swamp thing. Yeah. Like an upset marijuana plant. Ah. Yeah. Scary movie too. 
So they all like goth and punks and shit? Yeah, they're all like young kind of kids that were into that graveyard life and went over there and defaced some of the gravestones. Um, so I could imagine that, oh, that's kind of like a, one of those like a... Statue scare? That, yeah. Oh, you see that? That was How like the wall gets clear when you put the light? That was the... It's good for a double scare while you're focusing on that and jump out of your yeah. outside. And it was kind of like uh, seeing uh, a dead body inside of a castle. Right. I'm assuming those came down, yeah. Crack up. Get him. I can't imagine how expensive this is to like, And shout out to the people who make home haunts. Well, when they do it, like. They are like super detailed. Yeah. And I've been to home haunts that are like this, actually. Yeah, no, I've I've seen some of them too. I, I don't know if you remember this guy, but his name was Awkward Arsic. Yes. <laughs> uh, I missed that guy's concept, but he, he did some home haunts that were pretty freaking dope. I think you did the same home haunt, actually. Did you post, did you post a home haunt? Oh, you're talking about the uh, Krampus one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I went out there and. and went through it and we filmed it. We got permission from the uh, people to film through it. That was a dope home run. I mean, it was only like two minutes. We drove like literally an hour to go out there to do it, but it was so cool. That's the life. That's the uh, home. I'll, I'll be attending their home run this year, too. That's kind of how I get my home things out of there. It's okay, too, with, with all this, but uh, the Bloodshed Brothers, uh, they do amazing work. Last time, last year, me and my uh, Photographer Robert went out there to check it out. Oh, that's cool. There's the cell phone. But, uh, they, they do really quality content like this, so. Oh, she's on FaceTime, huh? She looked like she looked like one of the victims of the freaking of the rain. Yeah, this house was aesthetically really nice. What's that? It was just, it was just a hand scare. Look at that hallway, though. Look That's at that. dope. Yeah. Looks like a hallway where a seance was about to occur. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this. this looks cool and shit, too. I remember this. Uh oh. The lights went out. Yeah. No, that one. About to get freaky. Oh, That's crazy. I have to out See, he's watching the camera and controlling the button. I like too with with HHN like they mix those actual like real scares with like practical shit you'd probably see at a you'd probably see at a freaking Halloween store you know yeah the hey, it's, on? it's like catacombs are these all like the kids that fucked with the graveyard in the past or something or? Uh, I don't think so no, I think I think it's just the kids that went missing. There was no additional kids. Oh, that's so, creepy. How did they go That guy looks like he's young. How did they go missing? Was it them playing around in the graveyard? Or? I, I think the, that was the repercussions of messing and defacing the gravestones. The actual like spirits came back to get them. And they went missing. It's not like known 100% what happened to them and you're you're there investigating this is dark dude yeah you're there investigating that's what the exit sign in the scenic view yeah little kid voices <laughs> that's creepy <laughs> are creepy as hell we got one last scare before we exit out of here or what's going on is that it oh we're here Shit. Who was that supposed to be a shrine of? I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Yeah. But other than that, it was really, uh, um, it was really dope. I really liked the the whole idea of having, you know, you're seeing the aftermath of all the kids that you saw in the beginning dead and and hung up and their phones out and everything, and they're on Facetime with the other kids. It's it's really cool. Yeah, no, that that was a. Uh... Probably as far as like an original, one of the fan favorites as far as originals go. Right. Um, 
I think that was Losh's favorite as well. Shout out to uh to uh Losh, Adrian and uh and Scott. Hornites Inscripted. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked those guys out, Hornites Inscripted. Um they yep. put out some great content. Um but yeah, no, that that was that was a fan favorite. I liked it a lot. I thought it, it was aesthetically pleasing as well as it had some really, really good scares. Right. Uh definitely some creepiness to it. Kids and graveyards is is scary in itself. Oh, each yeah. one of the, each one of those separately is scary within itself. Kids Definitely. in horror movies or graveyards in horror movies, we put them together and Boom. you get it's Frankenstein <laughs> though, man. That's all you did. Yeah. No, then, but yeah, that that's that's something I liked really a, a lot about this maze was uh first off, it took place in like catacombs and like a whole graveyard. So that was really cool to see all that. And, and just scenic wise, it was beautiful. I mean, especially that hallway filled with candles. Yeah, I that mean, was dope. We saw that effect too with um, the, the Krampus maze we went to, uh, the home haunt that we went to. They did that same effect, which was, which I, it blew me away because it looked really cool. Um, it's some type of mirror effect, I believe. Yeah, but it looks dope, man. It looks really cool. Um, but that was really cool. And I liked all the uh, different, like, kind of, uh, skeleton people that you saw popping out like there was they're all unique and like look like they were just uh, kind of dressed in like different eras or like ghouls or something like that which really looked cool um, and of course you have the kids just that open it up for you that like you find out that they're messing with this and then as you go in further and further you know you see that it's more serious than they think you know and instead of it being yeah. a game it, it's more of it's more of like the rumors are true from what they heard of this graveyard you know what I mean so um, it's kind of your job to kind of investigate as to what happened to these kids and, and what's going down at this graveyard, which I think is really cool. And if you kind of think of it, like remove remove a little bit of that the investigation story and the kids, it's it's almost like your your uh, um, Pandora's box is almost like the blacklight version of this. Right. There's a lot of skeletons, uh, a lot of like dead beans. Yeah. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the the black light aspect of it, even though it wasn't an actual 3D maze. Yeah. And some, some of the puppets like that, like kind of like wolf lion type of looking thing. That thing yeah. looked crazy. It looked like a demon dog. Yeah. Um, but the and and also the fact that you guys had like a, a different entryway that was interactive. You could get through it if you knew about it. Yeah. That, that's always cool. I've always um I, I forget uh. Who was it? The who are the guys that do the Queen Mary and were doing a haunt over in Orlando? Oh, uh, you're talking about um, I believe it's Thirteenth Floor Entertainment. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, talking about Dark Horizon. Dark Horizon. Yeah, they had their their haunt over in Orlando, and it had like the and I think over at the Queen Mary they also had like those uh those hidden bars. Right. I always thought that that would be something really cool to incorporate within. A haunt like almost taking it to an extreme haunt level without the touching and all the craziness but kind of getting you out of your atmosphere like if you felt lost inside right. of the, the maze that would be psychologically that would mess with me big no, time but yeah, it would, I, it would I be a you. cool experience yeah no it'd be really dope um but no i think these are two great uh solid mazes that we've had at the events uh and in, in quite some time actually i mean it's good that we're seeing it get back to more creativity, um, well, at least with uh, Hollywood side. You know, Hollywood, um, I'm not saying they lack creativity, but the, when they release more original mazes, like that drives us fans over here in Hollywood like really psyched because we want to see more originals. And with Pandora's Box and, and Holidays in Hell, they did, they did a really good job on those, and we were hoping for more this year. So uh, we'll see. But um, as far as the East Coast goes, I mean, they always knock it out of the park with their originals, and they do a great job with them every single year. Uh, they know how to bring that story to life and, and really tie it into their event even further. If, you, if you're familiar with any of the history of, of the, the event, whether it be Cary, Ohio, um, or anything to do with any of the icons, like they, they, they tend to really just bring it back and kind of tie it in in some way possible. Yeah, the, the icons and the, the lore of Cary. Cary. <laughs> Fucking Cary. But, yeah, that's going to do it this week for Coast Comparison. We hope you guys enjoy this one. Uh, tune in next week for another episode of East vs. West, uh, and we will see you guys soon. Deuces. Deuces.